banished from the lands between, the tarnished have lost the grace of the Erd Tree, growing strong through hardship and death. But then the shattering, the breaking of the Elden Ring occurred, and the tarnished were beckoned by the trail of lost grace, leading them back to the Erd Tree, so that one can brandish the Elden Ring and claim the title of Elden Lord. But this journey is challenging, and the tarnished are coupled with a maiden, who share their guidance and the wisdom of the two fingers. The guidance of grace would ensure that the pair be brought together, or at least, such was the promise long ago. When the tarnished of no renown enters the land between, it's not long before they realise that they are without a maiden. You are maidenless, a bit player, fully divorced from the strength of runes. Feel free to go off and die in a ditch somewhere. It's very peculiar that someone who could see Grace as strongly as the Tarnish would be without the Maiden. So much so, that it should raise our suspicions. Coincidentally, in the area the Tarnish first finds themselves in, a dead Maiden can be found. Could this Maiden have been destined for the Tarnished, waiting for them to arrive at the Lands Between? But who would have killed this Maiden? Was it because they wanted the Tarnished to be Maidenless? Or for a different motive? Let's explore these sinister possibilities together. Firstly, let's review the crime scene to see what evidence we can gather. The victim is found in the Chapel of Anticipation, a decaying church found in southern Leonia, found slumped at the side of the chapel. Our victim doesn't appear to bear any signs of a struggle, yet there's a large pool of blood beneath her. Like many murder mysteries, this blood could hold many clues, and lucky for us, we can be privy to some. The Lord of Blood's favour is an oath-scented cloth which is said to be anointed by the Tarnished with the blood of a maiden. The Tarnished can find blood to anoint this cloth when encountering Arena at the Church of Inhibition and our victim's pool of blood at the Chapel of Anticipation. So this proves that this individual is in fact a maiden, which makes sense seeing as they are wearing the maiden set. But this is where the investigation becomes a bit more clouded, as other than the blood, there isn't much more on the victim to help point to a cause of death. Found on the body is the tarnished Wizen's finger, an item used to write messages conveying to the other worlds. It's a relic of those who came before, and left to help those who would come after. This could have been used by the Maiden to write the nearby message. Though the path be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. This could be a last message of encouragement sent by the Maiden to their soon to be maidenless tarnished. Could this tarnished have been us? Examining the surrounding Chapel of Anticipation, we can see that a large portion of the chapel has in fact collapsed. A gaping hole resides suspiciously close to where the Maiden is laid to rest. So maybe the Maiden was not murdered at all. Could their death just have been an unfortunate accident caused by the crumbling chapel? All of the wooden panels and banisters found around the chapel seem to be quite older than the Maiden's body, with the body looking quite fresh while the fallen roof has been long festering spiderwebs. The chapel as a whole is located on a small plateau, which is only home to one other creature, the Grafted Scion. A grotesque mass of grafted bodies, the Grafted Scion can be found in numerous places around the lands between. After the Tarnish leaves the Chapel of Anticipation for the first time, they venture down a set of steps and come across an opening which reveals a Grafted Scion. This boss, wielding two swords, can swiftly dispose of the unprepared Tarnished with its deadly thrusts and spinning slashes. It's feasible that the grafted scion could have spun its way to the execution of our maiden, with the maiden then dragging herself towards the chapel, her final resting place. Stanzi24 proposes that the grafted scion found near the Chapel of Anticipation was purposely sent by Godric the Grafter. Godric was a feeble man who saw power through the grotesque act of grafting, hoping that one day they will return together to their home, bathed in rays of gold. The grafted scions, some of which can be found near Godric himself, share a similar resemblance to Godric, and due to their close proximity with Godric in the Stormvale Castle, it's not that big of a leap to assume that they are his followers. 
So if the crafted scions are the followers of Godric, it would make sense that they would be following his orders. So would Godric send anyone to kill a maiden? Well, what we do know is that Godric likes grafting, using the limbs of the tarnished and other creatures to perceivably gain strength. Though it unfit even to graft. So it seems more likely that the grafted scion is just trying to kill the tarnished rather than the maiden. The scion does only drop when the tarnished arrives at the arena, so perhaps it only just arrived at the Chapel of Anticipation. Furthermore, the entrance to the chapel contains two large doors and it's locked from the inside, requiring the tarnished wise and finger to open. If the maiden was bleeding to death from an attack from the scion, I don't think that the maiden would have had the strength or energy to shut and lock these doors, but perhaps just enough energy to leave one last message with the finger. So it doesn't seem like the grafted scions nor Godric were responsible for the maiden's death. So who or what else could have been responsible? Other than the grafted scion boss, the isolated plateau that holds the Chapel of Anticipation doesn't seem to contain any other individuals or secrets. The only way we as the Tarnished can revisit this place ourselves is through the way gate located at the second belfry. Another set of clothes that a maiden is known to wear is the Travelling Maiden set. This set is worn by maidens who travel the lands for multiple reasons. Some to seek the audience with the fingers, or others who wish to find the Tarnished who they were destined to guide. Now this maiden isn't wearing this set, so perhaps she was not travelling to the destined Tarnished. Or maybe she had just concluded her journey, and was simply waiting for the Tarnished to appear. Our assailant also made their way to the Chapel of Anticipation, and with this place being quite remote, it seems that they calculated their purposeful murder of the maiden. Could our only known way of transportation, this way gate, hold a key to our mystery? Blythe, trusted friend and guardian of Rhyne the Witch, is one NPC we know that uses waygates. I've tried all the gateways to no avail. Perhaps it's time to ask Celebus and recall that spiteful little rat acting like he knew something. Hmm, spiteful. And knowing all about gateways. Maybe Celebus is someone we should cast an inquisitive eye over. Preceptor Celebus is an egocentrical sorcerer also serving Rani, who can be found at the Three Sisters in the Lyurnia of the Lakes. But like many in the lands between, Celebus hides many dark secrets. Ruins near Rani's tower hold the secret chamber of Celebus, revealing his obsession with drugging people in order for them to become his puppet slaves. Believing that the Tarnished shares his dark and troubled tendencies, he offers them a puppet of their very own. One of the puppets the Celebus offers is the Finger Maiden Therulina Puppet, a spirit of a Finger Maiden who never met the Tarnished she was meant to guide. A Maiden without a Tarnished, and a Tarnished without a Maiden. Poetic, isn't it? And some, such as Clavos Rojo, believe that Therulina is in fact the Tarnished Maiden, having been cruelly captured and trapped as one of Celebus' many toys. Celebus does know an awful lot more than he lets on, and could have easily been encouraged by his desires to kill the Maiden. But there is debate whether Therulina is in fact dead. Some state that she does appear in the courtyard before the fight against Radan, but this could still be a summoning from Celebus. In Elden Ring, it's common that the spirit ashes are the remnants of those who have died, and Therulina is specifically a puppet, so could very much still be alive, trapped in Celebus's chamber instead of dead at the chapel. But I don't think it even boils down to whether in fact Therulina is dead or not. No matter the conclusion, I don't think the Celebus would have killed our Maiden. Celebus shows blatant disgust for the Tarnished. If it were up to me, I wouldn't waste my time on the likes of you. Oh, you provincials never cease to amaze. Celebus is greatly xenophobic, so I'm not sure if he would even venture to a place that is remotely affiliated with a Tarnished. But maybe he would to kill those who would help those that he despises so much. Yet I still think that Celebus killing someone is not part of his MO. Celebus seems to drug and put his victims to sleep, taking them to his chambers where they succumb to his powers. In his own warped way, Celebus actually cares for his puppets. But I'm afraid each and every one is like a child to me. I can hardly just give them away. Even though Celebus is a twisted individual, I think his deranged moral code, where his puppets are a child to him, would prevent him from murdering a maiden such as the Tarnished. And in truth, 
The way gate isn't the only way we technically travel to or from the Chapel of Anticipation. When the Tarnish initially dies at the Chapel, they awake somehow at the tutorial area, the Stranded Graveyard. The Tarnish is briefly greeted by Torrent the Spirit Seed and a mysterious woman, Melina. Skipping to the Tarnish next encounter, Melina offers an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. Hang on, how does Melina know that we are maidenless? Maybe she knows we are maidenless because she in fact killed our maiden. Dr Moreau and others believe that Melina's innocent and friendly appearance is a mask for her sinister motives. At the beginning of a potentially blossoming relationship between Melina and the Tarnished, she promises the following. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. These words are what Melina uses to drive the player to venture to the foot of the Erd Tree, which inspired us all. But these words aren't technically true. There is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the Finger Maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no Maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. So Melina wasn't entirely truthful in her intentions with the Tarnished. While she can indeed strengthen the Tarnished, she cannot become a Maiden, building a friendship with us on a rocky ground. This layer of dishonesty should give us pause to question Melina's motives. She later states that she is unsure what her purpose is, and she's still searching for it. But who's to say this is not yet another lie? One to disguise her true intentions. Could she have murdered the Tarnished Maiden in order to take her place beside the Tarnished, pushing her closer to her goal? If the Tarnished summons Melina to help fight Morgoth, the Omen King, she wields the Blade of Calling. The Blade of Calling looks very similar to the Black Knife, perhaps what it looked like before it was imbued with the power of the Stolen Rune of Death. Both of these blades, as Mummy Rani points out, have a very similar moveset. The Black Knife is used by the Black Knife Assassins, a group of assassins who murdered Godwin the Golden on the Night of the Black Knives. The Black Knives were masters at assassination and stealth, and Charles Hastings proposed that Melina could have used these techniques to assassinate the Tarnished Maiden. But the true reason for as to why Melina would want to do this is still clouded. Melina states that she is without a body. For the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless. Another without a body is the Witch Rani, who would have us a blue doll. Rani, like Melina, has one eye closed at all times. However, this is the opposite eye to one another, almost as if combining the two together would give a complete being. They are also the only two in the lands between who seem to recognise Torrent. And if we reach the Frenzy Flame ending of the game, Melina's closed eye opens, to reveal an eye of a very similar colour to that of Rani's. So it seems that Rani and Melina could be the same being, or perhaps split from the same origin. So what does this have to do with the murder of the Tarnished Maiden? Well, perhaps Melina truly had no idea of her purpose or her actions, but was yet another pawn in the puzzle whose solution is only known by its creator, the Chessmaster Marika. Now this theory is quite shaky with little to no proof yet, but if Marika had indeed given Melina purpose in the Earth Tree long ago, she may have also given Rani a motive, through the guise of the Greater Will. If she put these two plans into motion, which obviously didn't end up going to plan, who's to say that she couldn't have catalyzed the scheme by murdering a single maiden? It could be possible, but their connections are very vague right now. There is one suspect we have avoided mentioning so far, and he's certainly one of intrigue. A lone figure found upon exiting the fringe folk's hero's cave, White Mask Varde like his hammer suggests, is enticing in a splendour, but full of deadly consequences. Like Melina, Varde immediately knows that the Tarnish is maidenless. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. But how would he know this? Varde's hands are also covered in blood. But whose blood could this be? Perhaps the blood of our very own maiden, who Varde disposed of, then waits, tauntingly greeting us once we enter the lands between. And many in the community, like Black Hat 42 o believes this is the case. If we follow Varde's questline, we begin to learn more about him and his distrust for the fingers. 
My doubts had been piling up, you see. The words of the two fingers cannot be trusted. Truly, naught but rambling, senile delusions. I believe that when the Elden Ring was shattered, the two fingers were corrupted, their guidance skewed, even worse. The fingers harbor no love for our kind. That's the part that irks the most. The Tarnish can choose to become a knight of the Mogwin dynasty, with its initiation requiring the killing of one's own maiden, and recanting the wisdom of the two fingers. But since you are maidenless, the blood of anyone's maiden will do. So Varde has a clear detest for maidens, so it's definitely believable that he would kill the maiden at the Chapel of Anticipation. But the God of Wine 7 questions this theory, wondering as to why Varde would kill the tarnished maiden, as it theoretically makes it more difficult for him to recruit you. And Varde is considerably far from the Chapel of Anticipation, so it would be quite the coincidence, if he didn't know that you were to arrive at the graveyard, for you to meet him there. But note that this is Varde telling the Tarnish that they normally have to kill one's own maiden. This doesn't necessarily have to be true. Maybe the normal ritual is any maiden, with Varde perhaps even killing your own maiden for this very same purpose. Or maybe he just murdered the Tarnished maiden to ensure a lack of guidance, with the more malleable and impressionable Tarnished being able to be persuaded to join his cause. Now that we have all our suspects examined, it's time for us to solve this mystery to the best of our ability, with the evidence that has been provided to us. I'm pretty convinced that the body we find in the Chapel of Anticipation is not only a maiden, but the Tarnish of No Renown's maiden, due to the importance given to this corpse, along with the last message of encouragement left behind. The grafted sign could have killed the maiden, ordered by Godric to slay the Tarnished and their maiden so that they could be grafted but the shut and locked door suggests that the killer is someone with more intelligence. While Celibus is a terrible creep, he seems more intent on capturing his victims rather than murdering them. Melina is definitely a more likely target, but I still believe her innocence, especially the sacrificial length she goes to when journeying with the player. So I'd like to accuse Varde for the calculated murder of the Tarnished Maiden found within the Chapel of Anticipation. Varde might not have the obvious means to perform this murder, but his distaste for the Fingers and the Maidens, along with him having already killed Maidens at least once before, gives him a glaring motive. If Varde didn't kill the Maiden in the Chapel of Anticipation, I would like to know whose blood remained sprayed over his body. But in saying this, I wouldn't be surprised if the ominous Finger of Marika has somehow gotten away with his murder so far. Who do you think is responsible for murdering our previous Maiden? Was it one of the suspects we've already mentioned? Or maybe another that we've missed entirely. Let's ponder this one by the phone, until our next mystery calls us, begging to be solved.